What's up, Quarkopter fans? HangarDrone.com. Today I'm going to be flying my B303 Seeker. Um, got the run cam on there with the Wakira 2DG gimbal, or G2D gimbal. Quadcopter has been uh, calibrated. So go ahead and take off. See if we got any drift. We got a little bit of a drift to the back right. Let's make sure we're trims are all out. I did have a nick in one of the blades, so one of the props. So that could be cause for why it is drifting and I had the trim turned up for my last flight, so um, it's been handling good lately, so very impressed with the way that it flies once you have a good transmitter and receiver. And the video that I've been getting off of the uh, run cam has been, been pretty decent, especially since there's no gimbal involved. It's just the quadcopter, the Wakira G2D mount, and then the run cam on it. So range has been handling pretty well lately. Just checking out the lights really quick. Everything appears to be good. Solid green flashing light. Uh, the sun's a little bit in my face, but take it up a little bit. We're about a hundred feet or so in the air. So we'll start coming back down. Like I said, it's been handling really well lately. Um, no range issues. Made sure to put some good batteries in the transmitter. And then ever since I've stopped with the Lockheed gimbal on here and the SJ4000s and the GoPros. I've been getting a lot better flights with this. I know I can pick up the GoPros and SJ4000 sports action cameras, but it seems to handle a lot better with the lighter payload with like the run cam on there. So. So the sun is setting. Um, to the right of us. So I'm not sure how it's going to affect the run cam. Any of these sports action cameras, they don't do very well with uh, differentiating light coming in there. So sometimes I can kind of screw them up a little bit. So you get a completely almost dark dot image, even though it is still daylight out. The camera is facing away from the sun. If it gets too close to the sun facing inwards, then you'll get um, lines in there from the sun. So try to avoid that. Just fly here in this little area. But the B303, even though it, it does hold its position, it stays steady. There's a lot of oscillation with the, the prop, so it causes... Um, Jello. Even though when you look at it, it's probably one of the smoothest stable hovering quadcopters that I own. And in this price range, but because of those inputs from the GPS signal, it's constantly telling the motors to, to compensate, which causes that vibration. So if you do not have any type of uh, vibration dampering or anti vibration, method set up on your quadcopter you're going to get a lot of jello in your video so like i said our range has been good lately 
handling very, very well. Flight time is always good with this. You know, 10 to 11 minutes on the regular. It's with the 2700 milliamp battery in there. Now the XK Detect uses a much bigger battery and you're going to get more flight time, almost 30 minutes. So, you know, these little quadcopters are half the price of the um, DJI. They don't quite use as, use as good of GPS as the DJI. But, you know, if you're on a budget, if you like to consume quadcopters like me and you want to get more quadcopters than just have one expensive one, I guess it, in the end it's better to have one expensive one that's consistent and flies well. You just really never know what you're going to get with some of these ones from China that are knockoffs such as the P303 Seeker. You know, I've had my fair share of problems with it, but as of late it's been flying great. So, um, you know, if it would have came from the factory like that, I would have been really happy because it saved me a lot of headaches and extra money. We're going to fly it, try not to get too much of the sun here. As we turn. Got a helicopter approaching us from the back. Stay far away out of its distance. Just do a hover here and take a good look at it. You can see it's kind of slanting down towards the left. And uh, I can see from my view, you can tell that there's the motors here are spinning at different speeds. So it does, still does have a little bit of a drift to the left hand side, but uh, I think a majority of that is due to that prop on that back left motor there. Um, it does have a, a ding in it. Um, these stock props, they work really well. They're really cheap, but at the same time, any little bump you have when you're storing this or not flying or causes you know a little bit of a chip in that blade or a little bit of a bend or a wrinkle and it really does affect the way that this quadcopter handles um, just even a piece of scotch tape on one of the blades can cause a big difference so it's best to uh, always have good props on these So we'll go ahead and take it up higher. Fairly high up now. Should be getting some good video out of it. But this is a fun one to fly, you know, if if yours works out and doesn't have any issues. Start bringing it back down. Now I like to bring this one down slow, just had some issues with it in the past. Bring it down in almost like stages. Because if it gets that wobble in there, it can cause it to fall from the sky. And you do have a camera on the bottom and don't want that. Coming down nice and slow. Excellent range. Now with the new 
FAA guidelines, you're not supposed to fly this out of the line of sight, so that'd be difficult to do anyways. The range on this is supposed to be 300 meters, but I haven't personally experienced that yet. Mine's always been much less. I have changed out the transmitter and receiver, and since doing so, you know, it flies very well. Um, this does have the return to home function on it, so it will return and, and land fairly close to where you've taken off. I've had some transmitter issues and I had to use that because I didn't have any control over the quadcopter, couldn't give it any inputs, and it landed within a few feet of where I took it off, but you, know, you need to make sure you need to do that magnetic compass before every flight to ensure that, you know, if you do have to use the return to home function, it does work correctly, uh, especially if you change locations quite a bit. So, and you need to make sure you got a good calibration on there when you do set your magnetic compass. Uh, if you don't, it'll just cause you problems with the quadcopter. It won't fly correctly. So, some videos on how to do that. I, I didn't do that correctly my first few flights and it caused some pretty big headaches and then also too didn't really know what to make of uh, the receiver being bad in this and the transmitter being bad uh, once I finally figured it out like I said swapped those out flown great ever since so probably going on five to six minutes the sun is setting a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see but they're going to make our, our video a lot darker, so we'll go back up one more time. The wind seems to be dying down too as well. Like I said, the sun is setting now, so we can kind of face it a little bit. And when it starts wobbling and oscillating like that, that's when I back off as far as bringing it down. If it starts doing that too much and causes this quadcopter to crash. So we'll cruise it around just a couple more laps really quick here and then bring it in for a landing. Probably going on six, seven minutes of flight time. We'll find a nice smooth spot to land this. This looks like a good one, so we'll bring it down, hold down on the throttle. Five seconds, disarm the motors, turn the transmitter off, and then unplug the battery. But this is the V303 Seeker with the Wakira 2DG gimbal and run cam HD attached to it. This is the run cam 1, not the run cam 2. So it shoots in 1080 at 30 frames per second. Pretty good about blocking out Jello. Uh, good results with it so far. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And I'll try to answer them as soon as I can.